YT Productions. Yeah. I love my HBCU. And boy, I love it, love it. I love it, love it. I love my HBCU. And man, I hope my team they won one. Yeah. I hope my team they won one. Yeah. Man, I hope my team they won one. Yeah. I hope my team they won one. Yeah. I tune into the HBCU Sports Lab to see if my team won a lot. If they lost, I'm quiet as a mouse. But if they won, she tell. Uh, I'ma do the dab, yeah. Dr. Ville, yeah. he know what he be talking about. Talkin Mike about. and Charles, Talkin they know what they be talking about. Yeah. Talkin they about. About. they compress the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they want a lot, yeah. And who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor, uh, yes sir, yes sir. And pay attention, Boy. cause he gon' teach a lesson. Yeah. And you gon' learn today, you gon' learn today How your team they play, play they play yeah. How they play, boy, you gon' learn today How your team they play, they play, they play How they play, play, yeah We represent that swag, that me yag And let me say, say, what's up to Tennessee State State You tune into the agency sports lab With Dr. This is Dr. Ville with Inside the HBC Sports Lab with Mike Washington and Charles Bishop. As you see, Charles Bishop is on assignment. I'm not sure if he's out there adjunct, you know, uh, playing hooky for this show, doing another show. I don't, I don't know what the thing is. But we got another good one in here. We have A.D. Drew in the house. A.D., how's it going? It's going fine, my brother. How's it going? And do we call it adjuncting? Is, it, is that a verb when somebody's out? <laughs> As a professor, as an adjunct, is it adjuncting? I, I think it's a, I think it's, I think it's a noun and a verb. <laughs> like he's an adjunct who's adjuncting. <laughs> he's an adjunct, and we'll just say he's lecturing. How about that? <laughs> there you go. Man, it's really, it's good to have you, Mike, and yourself. How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing good. I'm doing good, Dr. Bill. Good to be in the studio with you and, and Mr. Drew himself in the flesh. Ready, ready to get started. Week zero right behind us and headed to week one. No doubt about it. So let's get started. Welcome to episode 172 of Inside HBC Sports Lab with Mike Watson and Charles Bishop. The radio show and podcast streaming show that's covering the sporting HBCU dash for all things HBCU sports from institutions large and small, from the NAIA to the NCAA. We share insights and information on the HBCU sports culture, HBCU athletic aesthetics, to facilitate the story of HBCU athletic programs and the business of HBCU sports. I'm your host, Dr. Kenyatta Cavill, along with my co-host, Mike Washington, Charles Bishop. As I said, joining us today is none other than A.D. Drew. We are filming from our home studio and sending a signal live to our Case Waste 1230 AM studio with Texas Radio Hall of Famer Ralph Cooper in the beautiful home of Texas Southern University from Houston, Texas. That's what I represent. Just letting you know, just letting you know. With that being said, let's jump right into it. Today's episode of Inside HBC Sports Lab by THCA will be sponsored by THC Agency. THC Agency is a company that provides sporting and educational consulting and data analytics. Today's show will be a good one as we discuss the latest in the HBCU news score matchups and much, much more in the sporting HBCU dash, as we like to call it. Point of privilege, I want to give a shout out to none other than Dr. Lacey Reynolds. Many of you all know him as Coach Reynolds uh, through his previous endeavors. He is the interim chair of the great Department of Health, Kinesiology, and Sports Studies. Uh, he let me play a little hooky today, so I appreciate him. So I had to make sure I give him a shout out. Plus, I'm excited about his tenure as the chair. Um, the previous chair, Dr. Dawala Fisher, has got a promotion um, in terms of she's working in the provost's office. Um, and so big shout out to Dr. Dawala Fisher uh, as you see, the Department of Health, Kinesiology, and Sports Studies is representing over Texas Southern University's campus as we do things. With that being said, I got to jump right into it. 
think we'll hear a little bit about this on and off throughout the year when some Salem State football game opener canceled due, due to COVID-19 protocols. As week one of Winston-Salem State's football was set to be underway, UNC Pembroke Athletics has notified Winston-Salem State that the opening game of September 4th is 19 protocols. The cancellation is the best interest of safety of all coaches and fans. Quote, canceling competition is not something that we wanted to face as we start the season, but the safety of our student athletes on both teams is most important. The Delta variant, COVID-19, presents many unknowns, so we must do all that we can to minimize the spread. Although we don't, won't be playing this Saturday, there's lots of football left this season. The return of the Rams is just around the corner, said athletic director Eating Thomas. Eating. Thank you. Consideration for scheduling the game has not been determined at this point. So see what that means. Rams' next scheduled game is against Chattawawa and followed by the highly anticipated matchup against North Carolina Central. Don't say it. We got to make sure that game gets in there at all costs. With that being said, let me just reach back here, get this, you know, get your vaccination, get your vaccination, mask up, mask up. Uh, we understand the Delta variant is serious. So with that said, I also want to give a shout out for every a and the Lady Panthers soccer knocks off Northwestern State for the first win of the season for PB Panthers. Knocked off Northwestern, a uh, record of 4-0 dating back to 2-10, so they finally get that victory. They got a goal in 78 minutes, uh, a kick that started from senior JoJo Burnell and freshman Owens, then the SWAT defensive player of the week. Uh, Nugent, Andrea Nugent, that is, knocked in the goal-winning kick right to the back of the middle of the net. Nice. Preview dominated the match in a lot of ways. 17 shots, 10 of which were stopped in the net. So that lets you know that they were getting it done in a lot of ways and paid dividends as they found a way to get the win. Before we get too much further, I wanted to jump into it and see what your thoughts are on, on some news. Let me go to you, Mike. What's the news the other day for you? What's hot on your mind? Well, I don't know. There's so much news going on, Doc. I don't know whether if you want me to uh, touch on what happened this past weekend or what's coming up this Labor Day weekend. Well, so we'll, we'll send them back, you know, as we do our Sunday wrap-up show in the morning. So for those that want to hear, hear about what we thought that took place this weekend, go and check out the Sunday show, episode 171. You can go to YouTube. It's inside the HBC Sports Lab. So let's focus. Let's look forward. And don't tease them too much because, you know, we just we just got an hour to try to squeeze it all in. I really want to look forward to kind of the recent news because, you know, I got to get my poll out there. I know you're excited for my poll ranking. So, we, you know, I, I would be remiss if you didn't allow me to do my poll, Mike. I'm, I'm never excited about your damn poll. <laughs> <laughs> I'm never excited about it. What, one, one thing uh, before we get into it as well, if you'll allow me. Uh, That's cold blooded. That's cold blooded. Uh, as you know, I'm on the uh, uh, corporate crisis communication team. So, to the folks who are still without power in the Louisiana area uh, because of Hurricane Ida, um, I think there's just one, no, two confirmed fatalities, but lots of folks without power. The necessities, our hearts and prayers go out to them. I know that Southern is getting ready to play Troy. Um, so, I don't know if it impacts the game, but that region is impacted. That's the fourth hurricane in, in, in almost a year for that region. So your hearts and prayers go out to them. The, the, the first piece of news I'd like to touch on. Very, very, I'm glad that you brought that up. Very wise, very wise. Thank you. Prayers to all involved, no doubt. Absolutely. The, the first piece of news I want to go is that, as you know, I was at, you know, the game day, ESPN College game day experience this past weekend at the Swag Act Challenge. Whole, that that could be a whole show by itself. But I, I just got kind of the – I had a, my head on this viewership thing, and I saw a couple of references, a couple of sources, and I'll also give HBCUsports.com their credit as well. They posted some information that the viewership reached 1 million viewers. Woo! So the official attendance, I think, was 15,210, but 1 million viewership. 
And I think there was a game in Hawaii that was played the same day. I think their viewership was 920,000. So kudos, you know, to the program. As, as John Grant always said, you know, it's not always just about getting people to the stadium. It's also about viewership and, and increased exposure on the television and on the internet sites. So uh, I want to give a kudos to, you know, John Grant, his com committee, his team on the SWAC MEAC challenge. I thought overall it was a success from a viewership standpoint, from an exposure on the college game day experience, a couple of funny stories here and there, but, you know, great experience overall. Well said. Well said. Million views. That's nice. Let me go to AD Drew and see if he wants to drop any nuggets on today. What do you have for us first part of the show? Well, if you were watching the Black College Sports Network uh, about an hour or so uh, before this broadcast came on, you saw my interview with new – Steelman College Athletic Director. Yep. And Terrence uh Terrence Widow is the new athletic director. He was he still is the current head baseball coach at Steelman College. And uh not to be given too much of it away because I really want you to go and watch the interview. He's going to continue in the dual role and He's in a unique situation also, like uh, like somebody at that uh, little bitty school in uh, Mississippi uh, with his sons playing for him. Uh, I, I can't remember the name of that school in Mississippi, though. You know, I can't, that word would not come out of my mouth this week. I just want y'all to know because I am a I am a rattler, so I can't I, I refuse to say that <laughs> word this week. Oh man, Shot does, it, it's it's, it's, early does it start? Can we, does it start with a J? <laughs> can we get Mike? Can we get to Wednesday? <laughs> <laughs> nope. I, I, I won't Neely and Charles have something to think about when they get down to Miami Garden. <laughs> but no, but, shots but, fired number two. Yeah. But but seriously though, uh if, if I'm gonna say this ex interview just because I did it, but uh we, we have to get a lot of knowledge and a lot of information in that interview. And Stillman is looking to add additional sports. That's the good news. Nice. The bad news is football will not be one of those sports that is not in their strategic plans right now. Okay. Great point when you bring that up there in terms of identifying football in terms of what that means. Um, certainly means that they're probably going to be staying, uh, if you would, in terms of at the NIA level. But it's good to hear they are adding sports. That means a lot of people will get an opportunity. Shout out for the lab listeners jumping in here, man. They're deep today. Um, yeah, they still talking about their MEAC SWAC challenge, uh, talking about the national HBCU Battle of the Bands, uh, talking about some of the bands that showed up and showed out. My son loved it. He was excited about it. Lonnie Shaw Good. says, y'all still in awe, shocking all as he puts it as a BGMM, performance of the battle. Other bands, no doubt about it. George Suggs getting in his slugs with the BX Swag Challenge. Yeah, it was a game. Mike tried to give you a little dap on it, but I, I wouldn't let him go there quite yet. Kay Johnson is always in the house. Ricky Burton, Carl Edmund, uh, Chuck Hunt is always in here. Alicia Ray is in the house. Uh, shout out. And much, much more. Keep them going. Keep them coming. Willie D. Harris, Trudy Jackson. With that, we'll come back. See if we can get into a little bit of the poll rankings and we'll start getting into some matchups to see what we think about it. We'll start off, we'll do some games of the week. We're going to look at the HBCU classic games of the week. We'll look at independent games of the week. We'll look at MIAC, SWAC, CIAA, as well as SIEC games of the week. So we'll spread them out between our major division and mid major division. We'll do that Tuesday and Thursday. On Thursday, you get a breakdown to see what. Uh, uh, pundits, if you would, what they think are going to happen in terms of the outcome of the games. We'll give you a little insight just to break down what you can expect from the games today. With that, let's take a quick break. This is Dr. Bill inside the HBCU Sports Lab with Mike Washington and Charles Bishop. Stick with us. We'll be right back after this break. Support the Black College Sports Network so we can continue to provide you coverage. 
go to myjbn.com slash support and be a part of the black college sports. Tell everybody network. they can follow their dreams. This is Dr. Bill inside the HBC Sports Lab with Mike Watson and Charles Bishop. Charles Bishop is out on assignment, doing a little adjunct work, lecturing, I guess you would say. But we have none other than A.G. Drew in. So we're going to look at the week zero. We had a couple of mid-major games played this week. So the polls are updated this week in terms of the ranking. We're going to focus on the top five. I will give you the top ten, just so you know, because West Virginia State Yellow Jackets, they dropped out as well as the Shaw Bears. It had little to do with them, but the other teams that jumped in the top ten uh, had big victories this week. Uh, Kentucky State Thoroughbreds, Charles Bishop pulled, pulled, uh, picked that one, I should say, and Edward Waters got it done against Florida Memorial, so they jumped in the top ten after not being ranked last week. I did want to get in the top five. Let's really focus on the top five as you see the top ten, um, and uh, you can go to thdjagency.com to get the entire poll ranking, but let's focus on this top five programs, if you would. At number five, no changes here. Uh, Virginia State Trojans, uh, they are number five and remain at number five or six, seven points. At number four, you have the Langston Lions. Talk a little bit about their band. They were down here at the National Battle of the Bands. Give the band a lot of love to march. Uh, the Langston Lions there got it done in so many different ways. The marching pride, as they say. They gave homage to all the historical bands, junior high, high school, and obviously the area HBCUs, band directors of the past uh, on the screen while they were playing. It was really a nice uh, moment to really reflect because at first you're looking at what's going on, then you recognize, you're like, man, they're going through all the work. And if you're a resident of Houston, it really would have resonated with you. At number three, Miles Golden Bears, one first place vote. At number two, Savannah State Tigers, two first place votes, 82 points. Number one, Bowie State Bulldogs. I'm going to start with you, A.D. Drew. Obviously, no change in the top five, but I did want to get your thoughts about Edward Waters and Kentucky State jumping into the top ten uh, with West Virginia State Shaw dropping out. With the victories, do you think uh, that was appropriate or would you have no changes this week and just saw everything happen in week one? Uh. You, 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 you're shooting like Cam Newton right now. You're about to get cut, uh, Dr. Cavill, uh, with this poll. Uh, oh, you you, you were one for two. Kentucky State does deserve to be there in this, uh, in this second group. But Edward Waters does not. I was there. I was there live. My Edward Waters defense played good. They still had two thirds of the game that they got, they had to approve on before they would receive a vote from me. But I don't vote in your poll, so that's that's just my personal opinion right there, Doc. But the other ones, I I think we got right. I think you put uh, I think you put West Virginia State back in place of Edward Waters. Appreciate that update. The name here, Eli Shea, instead of Eli Shea, it's Eli Shea. I want to make sure I get that correct. Uh, sending out to the lab lectures. We 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 want to make sure that we get these names up there. Sending you like your son jumped in here. <laughs> want to make sure he knows that uh, the lecture listeners. We appreciate y'all. So we got we got to show some love for the names. Let me get back in here and let Mike do his thing. Mike, Kentucky State. Edward Waters jumped in the poll. You saw how Edward Waters got it done on the field last seconds of the game. He broke that down on Sunday. Kentucky State. Uh, really got it done and ran all over Central States. Any problem with my poll rankings? Uh, yeah, I, I got to agree. Edward Waters, I mean, I'm sorry. I need a few more data points on them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I need some data, data, data hey, points. Go. It's, 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 not a, it's not a summary. This is not week 10. This is week zero. First week I, of the poll. You give one data point and you make a decision. Read my lips. I don't care. This is the same <laughs> Edward Waters. They got thrashed last year. <laughs> and their defense looked horrific this game. If you look at it, I didn't see the whole game, but I pulled up. I was like, really? No, I'm sorry. Not Edward Waters. I, I think I think that was wrong. 
uh, I, if this if this was a commercial where Doc was wrong. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, uh, other than that, um, you know, again, you, you, if you look at seats four through six, you can still see them. I think we'll get we'll learn a lot in this week one because I think Albany State. I'll let me make sure I because my wife's people get a Albany State. Uh, most a pretty good team. They beat Miles, who's been past champion, three out of the last five times they played them. I think they may be a stronger team, but other than that, I think you got it good. I think the top five is good, uh, with the exception of that Edward Waters, Edward Waters thing. And I think the Kentucky State thing will take care of itself throughout the season. Wow. Well, let me go to the major division. Y'all, y'all, uh, y'all just ruined everything. Uh, major division, there was one change in the poll ranking. This happened to do uh, be due to the big victory by North Carolina Central um, in terms of what they got done over Alcorn State Brady. So let's see. Uh, receiving votes, still Norfolk State Spartans and Alabama State. Uh, dropping out this week was Bethune, Cookman, Wildcats. No problem of their own. Just another team uh, named North Carolina Central got a big victory and found a way into the top 10. So let's go over that. Um, 10 is Prairie View. They drop one spot. At number nine, you have Alcorn Straight Braves. They fall all the way from the sixth spot to number nine, almost falling out the poles, but they were able to stick in there. Obviously, they're 0-1 in non-conference. At number eight, North Carolina Central's the Eagles debut uh, – as they were not ranked last week, but because of the victory over all Corn State Braves and the MEAC Swag Challenge, they jumped in the top 10 with 27 points. And number seven, you have Jackson State. They move up a spot, although they don't play. People think highly of them. So it'll be interesting to see what that happens this week. At number six, you have South Carolina State. Top five programs where it gets really good. All these programs have first place votes. So a lot of people are thinking highly of these teams. Got some key matchups this weekend between some of these teams. Uh, number five, North Carolina A&T Aggies. One first place vote, 73 points. Remain at number five. They have a big matchup against Furman. They can make a huge statement, not just in terms of HBCU ranking, but uh, outside of that as they play a team that oftentimes gets some love at the rankings, especially from their previous days in the program. At number four, Florida a and One first place vote, 79 points. Number four. They play have a top 10 matchup with four versus seven as they play Jackson State, as you know, Sunday in Miami. At number three, Southern Jaguars. Two first place votes, 98 points, remain at number three. Moving along, number two, Arkansas Pine Bluff. Uh, no, two first place votes, 109 points. Um, they play Lane. Looks like they'll get a chance to kind of tune it up. Be interested to see what they'll do in that game as they prepare for some bigger games down the road. At number one. Alabama a and Bulldogs, six first-place votes. This is one that's going to be interesting as they face off against the top-10 team, South Carolina State Bulldogs. Bulldogs looking for a little payback. Miak is feeling really good with the chest right now. Um, this is going to be interesting. Another one of the top teams, obviously the predicted uh, number one team from a lot of people in the East as uh, Alabama a and ranked number one in this poll. Be interested to see what that looks like. Let me stick with you, Mike. Think North Carolina Central des deserves to get in the top ten, and oh. do you like where they sit? Yeah, absolutely. With 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 without question, yes, I I do like where they sit. The the <clears throat> they had an impressive victory. Um, you could argue that you know they could move up to you know number seven, give or take. the The question I have is Alcorn State moves below everybody except per review A and M. Who voted in this poll? <laughs> <laughs> I want to know. I, I I see some bias in this. I'm just that's just me. Uh, so the other question I have is, it'll be interesting. So you wanted to put all going out the poll, or just wanted to put them at ten? I put them at ten. <laughs> I put them at ten. You gonna put them above a, a, a below everyone except for review and them. None of those other teams have played a game with the exception of NCCU. And you put them above the only school is Prairie View A&M. Is that not bias? I'm just saying. So the other, the other thing I want to uh, point out is 
if North Carolina A&T loses to Furman, okay? So what does that mean? Because, you, you, you know, Alabama a and is playing South Carolina State. Both are in, you know, tops of the pole. What does that mean for North Carolina a team who's still really a viably good team? How does your ranking consider that? If they lose a close one to Furman and you have an Alabama A&M team beating a South Carolina, when they beat South Carolina State, notice I stress when Alabama a and beats South Carolina State, um, how does that flesh out in the polls? Uh, so that's a question. When you have some of these independents that play these, these close matches, how do you weigh that? Because maybe they lose a close match, but Furman's not there, you know, you know, they finished what second or third in the in standings in the Southern Conference. So they're a strong team. Let's say it's a close game. So how do you weigh that against them? That's my only question and concern. First, wins are important. Yes. But there is a point differential that's taken into the calculation of the poll rankings. Um, so depending on whether the game is on the road, at home, neutral site, point differential, early on the season, you'll get a huge data point, as you like to talk about. Um, and so it's going to be scattered shot everywhere. As you start to tighten up during the season, you get more data points. Uh, then you'll see consolidation in terms of who played who. And, and how that affects the ranking. So a great question in terms of what that looks like. Uh, quickly, before we go to the break, A.D. Drew, what are your thoughts on the poll ranking? Well, it's kind of along the same lines with what Michael just asked, but what about the Southern Troy game? With Southern playing an FBS Correct. opponent, Good. how does a close loss in that game, and let's assume Southern and a and lose, a and loses to F. CS Southern loses to FBS. Right. How does that how is that going to affect your poll next next week? And no matter what happens with those, if they lose, they will be behind the winner of the Florida AM and that other team game in Miami Guards in the Orange Blossom <laughs> Classic. So uh, you know, we know. There's going to be some clarity in the in, in the poll, and will Prairie View actually stay in the poll with, with that with the rival game against Texas Texas Southern? Prairie View's in there right now. A loss to Texas Southern, they 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 hold it all by a thread at number ten. That drops about. Would they even receive votes if they lose to Texas Southern? That would be the question for Prairie View. Right. I think all your points are valid. And I will say this about the Troy Southern. Again, wins are important uh, in the data points in here. And there's a lot more points given to wins. Um, there is points differential in terms of is it a top 10 win, whether that is in the HBCU or top 25 win in terms of the national polls, if you do. Uh, if you play up against the FBS program, yes, there are points in terms of point differential because you're playing on a road. Um, to a uh, team that has more scholarships. But at the end of the day, the biggest uh, framework of wins uh, in this poll ranking is wins against FCS programs, wins against HBCU teams. So it is an HBCU ranking. With that, this is Dr. Bill inside the HBC Sports Lab. Stick with us. We'll come back and we'll start talking a little bit about some of those matchups that these gentlemen talked about. We'll get into a MEAC Swag Major Division Game of the Week. We'll be joined by none other than Charles Bishop, as he's back from his assignment. So he'll join us uh, after we take this break. And we'll be right back with you. This is Dr. Bill inside the HBC Sports Lab. Stick with us for the second half of the show. It's the show where we take you inside the game before the game begins. It's, it's the, the pregame. Pre -game. With your host, Charles Bishop. So get ready because we pregame harder than the other show's party. It's the pregame. Yes, that sound means it's time once again for the 36th annual Labor Day Classic. 
featuring the Prairie View A&M Panthers versus your Texas Southern Tigers for the Battle of the Lone Star State on Saturday, September 4th. Kickoff, 7 p.m. at BBVA Stadium. Don't forget the halftime battle of the band as the TSU Ocean of Soul take on the PBAMU Marching Storm. Tickets are available online at www.tsusports.com slash LDC tickets. Let's bring the Knicks Durley Traveling Trophy back to its rightful home. Let's get back to getting ticks instead of watching flicks. Before we can safely get out there, we need the facts on COVID-19 vaccines. Visit GetVaccineAnswers.org so you can make an informed decision for yourself and for your crew. Your ad could be ran here. MyJBN.com backslash support. MyJBN.com backslash support for more information. CBM be on uh it'll be on uh South. This is Dr. Cavill's inside the HBC Sports Lab with Mike Watson and Charles Bishop. <laughs> yeah, Mike is giving Charles a hard time as we get back into it. We just talking about Charles sliding out to Miami on the beach doing one of those Miami martinis. Or you know how he is. <laughs> he might have a cigar in old fashioned. You just gotta check with they catch him. Exactly. <laughs> That's the game Almost. plan. <laughs> I don't want to tell too many of the secrets, but yeah, his, his brother know how to get down. Well, let's get into the MEAC Major Division Game of the Week. Again, we will get the scores for these gentlemen on Thursday, so save your pencil marks, but it will give you some data points to think about. This game is in Huntsville, Alabama. It features top 10 poll rankings, at least according to Dr. Bills, that y'all uh, looked at my poll rankings as y'all tore them up in terms of the Major Division, but, you know, it is what it is. This features a number six South Carolina State Bulldogs traveling on the road to the number one team, Alabama A&M Bulldogs at HBC Sports. Um, and most people's rankings have Alabama uh, near the top, if not the top. But anyway, you look at it, it's a top 10 matchup. What are your thoughts? Let me stick with you, Charles, as you jump in here. What are your thoughts on this game? It's a Saturday, September 4th, 6 o'clock. It will be on ESPN Networks. Um, Lewis Cruz Classic, it is Lewis Cruz Stadium. Man, this is Alabama a and coming off a championship. What do you say, Charles? Well, I, I think if anything uh, uh, gives us a little bit of indication, uh, Alabama a and did what they had to do against this same South Carolina State team in the spring. Uh, but one thing I'm not going to do is start discounting these MEAC teams with this chip on their shoulder. <laughs> so uh, I think this is going to be a pretty good one, but – uh, I think Aquil Glass, uh, they are out to prove a little something this upcoming uh, fall. Uh, when you take a look at uh, the weapons, you know, Zayd Moore, uh, Abdul, Padi Ibrahim, uh, these guys, they can flat go get it. Uh, I think the question marks for around Alabama a and they lost quite a few pieces on the defensive side of the ball. And, you know, if you the thing about Alabama a and if you're going to get out and you're going to have to get after that defense, you're going to have to outscore them. So uh, it should be a very interesting matchup. So uh, I, I look for South Carolina State to be right there with them. I, I, I like these, you know, out-of-conference matchups. This is what it's about. Man, you got no doubt about it. I like this. Miak Squack, home field type of game, trading. Obviously, uh, during the spring, the game was in South Carolina in terms of Orangeburg. Um, so fascinating. I like this. Top 10 matchups. These are the type of games where I say where rankings matter. These are the games that you can market uh, to the public that may not know but so much about South Carolina State. But you tell everybody this is a top 10 team. People say, oh, hold on. We're playing a really good opponent. And these uh, Bulldogs, many people should be in the stands anyway in terms of what they did in the spring. But now you just find a way to even market it more so. With that being said, let me shoot it over to Mike. What are your thoughts in terms of this top 10 matchup between Neak and SWAC teams? You got the favorite in a lot of people's eyes of the SWAC. You got the favorite in terms of many people in the Miak. Uh, this is fascinating in some different ways. What do you say, Mike? Yeah, I think the events of this past weekend have maybe swayed a few more souls uh, with the Swag Miak Challenge. But, you know, with South Carolina State, the secondary is solid. 
Uh, the linebacker core is, is, can be good. Uh, the offense was just okay, good enough in 2019. So experience has told us that, you know, you know, South Carolina State will have a good, solid defense. Alabama A&M just coming off. Alabama still finding a way to get it done. Like I said, we'll get your scores and thoughts on that on Thursday. But just giving some indication, I, I think that's going to be part of it in some ways. But let's move on to the game. Let's get back to the Texas side of things. Labor Day Classic. This game is played at BBVA. Texas Southern is the home team in this game as Prairie View will travel from the hill. Uh, we have Prairie View coming in at number 10, Prairie View A&M, at Texas Southern University. So Texas Southern gets the top-ranked team in their house. Uh, Prairie View just got away with the victory last year in the spring, um, but they've been getting down against Texas Southern. It'll be fascinating to see, can Texas Southern get over the hump? Let me stick with you, Mike. Uh, what are your thoughts in terms of this matchup? Again, we'll hold off any scores, uh, but break down uh, what your thoughts in terms of this matchup. So I think you hit the nail on the head that PV has kind of owned this series. The majority can go back the last, you know, five, six, seven years. I think PV returns eight starters on the offensive side, nine on the defensive side. They lost some key pieces. So the, the, the big quarterback, the, the big question for PV, really for both teams, is who's going to play quarterback? Yep, yep. So for TSU, you have <laughs> – you who's going – they're going to call people out the stands. So uh, TSU has a plethora of quarterbacks. They've tried. You know, Jalen Brown appears to be maybe the standout freshman. They've got a couple others, you know, Jacob Landry. And then PV, they've got Conley from uh, the transfer from Louisville. So who's going to play quarterback? That's the big question because that that person ultimately drives the offense. I look for PV to kind of maintain its dominance in this series. Uh, as, as Doc mentioned, I'll hold off on the score, but I look for PV just because they gained that defensive front. I look for Coach Dooley to maintain his, his defensive prowess. The big question is who's going to anchor or who's going to quarter? Who's going to lead the offenses for both teams? Um, because you, at the end of the day, you got to put some points on the board. But at the end of the day, I look for PV in a close battle. Yep, Miak game week. That SWAT game it finds Miak on the road. Uh, the SWAT game of the week is a conference game. We will get into the Jack State FAMU game. We'll get into the Grambling Tennessee State game. Those are classic games, independent games. We'll save those for Thursday so you can get a little more information on what that looks like and get some uh, updates on that. We'll switch to the mid uh, after we take this break. Stick with us. We'll be right back after this break. You got the breakdown. Major game of the week, major division game of the week. We shall see. We'll talk a little bit more about that and give you scores, updates on Thursday. When you're looking for the latest information on Southern University Sports, the Southwestern Athletic Conference, and HBCU Athletics, there's only one place to go. Tune in to the Carlos Brown Show, exclusively on the Black College Sports Network. <laughs> This is Dr. Cavill inside the HBC Sports Lab. Finishing up on that last quarter of the show, wanted to start with the CIAA Mid-Major Division Game of the Week, Down East Viking Rock, Rocky Mountain, North Carolina Rocky Mountain Sports Complex, CIAA, 3 o'clock Central Time, Saturday, September the 4th, Elizabeth City State Vikings versus number seven, Fayetteville State Broncos. We've seen what this matchup does a couple of times. Mike, if you would go ahead and jump on in it. Uh, <laughs> this prediction is a little bit easier. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you've got Fayetteville, who has finished first place in that South division. Uh, I believe it's the South. Um, for what? Yeah, for the last two, three years in a row. And, and you've got Elizabeth City, who's finished at best in what sixth place in the North division the last three years. So there's nothing, no amount of data points that gives it, that I've seen <laughs> that leads me to think 
that Louisville <laughs> City is going to beat a Fayetteville. Fayetteville will come out of the South again, probably again this year. Uh, you look at offensive ranking and defensive rankings, they have been almost dead last in yards gained, total offense, defensive, in, in the CIAA for the last three years. So I know they have a, had a pretty decent recruiting year, but again, this will be a Fayetteville State win. I look for them to come out strong and get a, an opening day victory against Elizabeth City State. Great point when you talk about that Fayetteville State is wrecking shop. They're just trying to see if they can get that final uh, over the hump to see if they can win the conference. So they do dominated in a lot of ways East for a couple of years. Um, so let's get into it uh, a little more and move to the SIC. In terms of the Red Tail Classic, it'll be held um, uh, Sunday, September the 5th, 6 o'clock, Montgomery, Alabama, Crampton Bowl. A lot of people familiar with that. Fort Valley State Wildcats, this old rivalry game. Uh, last decade, this would have been for a conference championship in terms of championship yep. game. Both of these teams have fell off the radar a little bit. A lot of history there. Tuskegee Golden Tigers coming in this game. What are your thoughts in terms of this matchup? I think this is going to be a lot evenly matched. You looked at Fort Valley State. I think they finished, what, third in 2019. Um, you look at where Tuskegee finished, you know, second, but only behind Miles coming out of the west of the SIAC. But now you got, you know, Savannah State coming in. I think this is two evenly matched teams. Uh, you, you really, in this case, have to give the advantage to the home field, to the home team in this case. So, um, and I, I say that kind of with a little bit of a, a, a scratch on the head, but I, uh, since it's played in Montgomery, I, I got to give the edge to Tuskegee. With that, um, just wanted to go in a little bit more in terms of that Tuskegee matchup for Valley State. What are your thoughts in terms of ESPN picking up this game in terms of Rest Tail Classic? They moved on, CIAA in a lot of ways. Uh, what are your thoughts on that um, in terms of ESPN picking this game as a classic event for the mid-major division or Division II program? Yeah, I think it's I think it's big and I think it's tremendous that they pick up a mid-major classic like this, it gives exposure to not only the two institutions, not only the two football teams, but to the heritage of the Red Tail Classic. You heard a lot of mention on it, on even on Good Morning America with Robin Roberts, um, who I think her dad or grandfather was a uh, Tuskegee Airman. But yes. I, I like, I I like the, the, the focus on the culture and the aspect of the game. And I like the fact that ESPN has picked up not only this one, but a couple of more of the mid-major games as well. So I, th I think it does well. I think it'll, it won't have near the effect that the college game day had on the North Carolina Central uh, <clears throat> versus Alcorn, but it'll have somewhat of an effect in, in that it's going to increase the exposure because I know they'll focus a lot more on the historical impacts of this game as well. Point well made. With that, let me go with you, Charles. Let's stick with the SIC and then we'll go back to the CIAA to get your thoughts on that. Sticking with the SIC matchup, Red Tails Classic, Fort Valley State, Tuskegee Golden Tigers. As I was talking to Mike, I told him, you know, last decade, if you would, this would have been for SIAC championship. Um, but these teams have fallen a little bit uh, on hard times, not dominating the class, uh, the conference much like they did in the past, but still a great matchup, great rivalry game between these two teams. Uh, excellent one for television. What are your thoughts on this matchup? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm curious to see if, if Tuskegee can get themselves uh, back on track in, in this game. Game played in Montgomery. Uh, I'm looking for uh, Tuskegee to kind of reassert themselves back into this SIAC uh, sort of a race, if mm, you will. Um, right. You know, it'll be uh, – Miles needs a challenger. So – and, and uh, Tuskegee has not been there lately. So uh, Tuskegee needs to get themselves back up and rolling uh, to be that program that we once knew they were. Well, let's jump back to the CIAA. I like the point you made about Tuskegee. You think they're going to be a challenger for Miles College. The Golden Bears folks are going to be like, not so fast. But uh, that's why we call it a rivalry game. But let's go a little bit north 
a little bit east in terms of the CIAA, Down East Classic, as they say in those part, Down East Viking Classic more specifically, Rocky Mountain Sports Complex, Elizabeth City State Vikings. Uh, they play at number seven, Fayetteville State Broncos, starting off. Boy, you talking about starting off the conference race in a tough way for Elizabeth City State in terms of what Fayetteville has done. But this is a North Carolina rivalry game. What are your thoughts on this matchup? Uh, Fayetteville State, I like them. I, they have all conference performers on the offensive line, Greg Brooks, Jalen Galloway. Then you take a look on the defensive side of the ball, you got uh, Keyshawn James, uh, uh, all conference defensive lineman, linebackers, Nigel Peel. So I, I really like a lot of the uh, aspects of Fayetteville State to go in there and get this win. Well, let me do this. Let me, let me take this umbrage a little bit. I know you all are going to be moving around. You might not get a chance to jump back in here and give your full breakdown. I know you'll provide the scores. But in case you don't, let's tease out a little bit um, and do with the HBCU Classic Major Division. This is Jackson State, Florida, Florida a and Top 10 matchup again. Man, I really like this first weekend. We got two top 10 matchups coming out the gate. South Carolina State, Alabama a and Then we also, and all these teams in the East Division, you talked about – Charles, you said, all right, I'll give you a little love early. Maybe it goes to the West, but don't be surprised if the East makes a statement near the end of the year. Well, they get a chance to make an early statement, that's for sure. Number seven, Jackson State Tigers versus Florida a and Rattlers. We had A.D. Drew. He wouldn't even say the name of Jackson State. He said oh, really? Yeah, the wouldn't, let, wouldn't let it part his lips. See, so, y'all, y'all can't see on camera. I got Snake Away all around my <laughs> desk. So uh, if any of y'all know about Snake Away in the South, you know how effective it is on especially rattlesnakes and moccasins. So uh, without a doubt, uh, Snake Away all around the desk. You know? <laughs> hey, you got Drew down here. You got him bringing out the mask. We're going to make sure he gets a chance to get some comments here. We're going to stay with you, uh, Charles Bishop. Tell us a little of your thoughts on this. Jackson State Tigers, Florida and and Rallis, uh, Hard Rock Stadium, Orange Blossom Classic, reinvigorated Miami Gardens, Florida. This is not a SWAC MEAC matchup. This is a SWAC Eastern Division matchup. Take it away, Charles. I know you, you broke know, them down all the last compounds, but do us a favor and give us a special treat on this. Yeah, I think one of the things that you really have to look at within this game is. Uh, the fact that Florida A&M has been off of football for now uh, a year and six months. Uh, so that's that's something to really kind of take a look at with regards to the conditioning once we get to the fourth quarter of play. I, I think uh, we kind of talked about this a little bit earlier. Uh, what, if any, advantage do teams that played in the spring had? It was negligible against uh, – well, I was negligible. You were talking about North Carolina Central and Alcorn. But this is uh, – you get an opportunity to see a team that actually played in the spring go against a team that did not play in the spring. So what sort of football conditioning or what, what sort of football shape is Florida a and going to be in? They're going to be well coached. We know Will Shotgun Simmons, uh, he'll throw the kitchen sink at you. There will be a trick play in there somewhere. Uh, but, you know, you're talking about – uh, a dangerous uh, receiving core, uh, talking about that Florida a uh receiving core where Xavier Smith uh, and these guys can flat go get the ball. Who is going to get the ball to them? When you're talking about Jackson State, uh, this is a team that is relatively unknown. It is that much turnover uh, from the spring. You're talking about four out of five starters on the offensive line. You didn't see them in the spring. You're talking about running backs. You didn't see them in the spring. You're talking about a completely – different wide receiving core that you didn't see in the spring. You're talking about four new starters along the defensive line. And then you bring back two all-conference linebackers in Aubrey Miller uh, and Keontae Hampton. And then the secondary is revamped. So Jackson State is a complete X when you have uh, talking about them coming into this game. And then we really have not seen Shador Sanders. Uh, you know, you can go back and look at sort of his, his high school film and things of that nature and sort of try to come up with some tendencies. But I think one of the things that I think is a, a huge factor in this game is we just don't know this is a different Jackson State team that we're going to see from the spring. Great point. This is a different Jackson State team, and it'll be interesting to see. In some ways, this might be a slightly different FAMU team. We hadn't seen them since 2019. Obviously, no. a lot of players are back. 
Uh, but uh, we saw from the first weekend, what does it mean when you haven't played in a while? It'd be fascinating to see what that looks like, the good, bad, and indifferent. Mike, what are your thoughts about this top 10 matchup between Jackson State and Florida a and we have to under we have to understand that Coach Simmons. We're talking about Coach Simmons now. I, I, I hate that he let for, left Prairie View, but he is now captain for the FAMU. And even though we haven't seen FAMU for since 2019, I think he's a different style of coach. He coaches on all three phases of the ball, as we've seen in years when he was at with Alcorn and when he was with Prairie View. So he went one and two against Jackson State with the Braves. So, uh, and with and with the Panthers, I think he was unblemished. I think he went 3-0 and against the Tigers. So, but, he, but he did go on one against the Tigers with Pam Yu, so. <laughs> so I kid. So if all in all considered, uh, it is the start of that two. Is, that is true, though. That is accurate. Yes, that is accurate. That is that is with uh so but if he has more wins against uh Jackson State if you that. The totality of it mm -hmm. I agree that is also accurate mm -hmm. <laughs> you also think you have the start of two new quarterbacks in their their retrospect you have a new QB one at FAMU and you have Shadur at Jackson State Shadur is going to need to knock out some of the kinks he's, to me he's going to need a game or two to to take care I think he'll have some nervous things. I, I think the same way with, was it, uh, Rayshon, uh, I forget his name, at uh, FAMU, who's just been named QB1. Come on, AD, come on back in here. Both, both teams. That, that, that would be so, Rashawn McKay, who, if Rashawn you remember, McKay, Mike, sorry. So, was the quarterback who led FAMU to the, to the victory over North Carolina A&T. Right. So, even though he's officially QB1 now, he is not a rookie quarterback. Let's keep that in mind. He is, new, he is new getting the starting role. He, he started He started two games in 2019. Yeah, okay. he did. So, yeah. He's, yeah. so it's not like he's never started a game before when you have no, no disrespect to Shadur Sanders. He has not started a collegiate game. Advantage, yeah. fam, you. We know who the running back is at FAMU, Bishop Barnett. Yes. Yeah, I know. Uh, well, well, hold on, hold on, on, on the advantage with, with the running game because Bishop uh, Barnett, he, he led FAMU with, I believe, only 400 yards rushing. So that's negligible. But when you got Ryan Stanley back there throwing duck and throwing Man, there, But he ain't there no more. I don't care who the <laughs> running back is. You could have had Earl Campbell back there. He wasn't going to get that many carries when you have a Ryan Stanley at quarterback. <laughs> but I'm just saying, I wouldn't, I, that wouldn't be my advantage. So let, let when, me when, you leave you, the, when you leave Fabio well, Russia with Fabio I, I, think you need, I think you need the voice of rationality in here. I well, mean, I want to ask this Why question I because I think uh, both of y'all are making tremendous points, but I want to get in this a little bit. No matter how good or indifferent you think the running back is or the quarterbacks in terms of their newness, Give me some updates on the, the offensive front. We saw this Saturday between North Carolina Central and Alcorn. You know, you had an Alcorn State team that came back. They had to replace four people on the offensive line. Charles talked about that. Yep. Um, it's not to say that they're not talented, but they haven't played together in some time. So what does that look like, and what does that mean for the running back? Because the running back can look really good if the offensive line is able to get some push and open some holes, any decent running back, even if he's not the greatest thing, it's looked pretty good. So I'm stuck with you, Charles, in terms of let's go into the trenches, break this down just a little bit. We'll, we'll, mm -hmm. we'll save all that other flair and talk um, for some other shows. I want to get down into some meats and the bones of it. I want to ask you, Charles, what are your thoughts, pros, cons, whatever, of what you've seen? Not your necessary your expectation that's going to be out there, but in terms of what you've seen up close, uh, focusing on Jackson State, what have you seen about the offensive line and defensive line uh, that you can tell the followers of what they may be able to expect in this game? And then, Drew, I'm going to ask you the same follow-up question, but I'm going to ask you that offensive line, defensive line for FAMU in terms of what you've seen, starting with you, Charles. Well, it goes back to my point about it, it being – 
of our, our new and revamped line. If we would ask me this question in the spring, I would say advantage fam you. From what I've seen thus far in camp, uh, these guys have caught on to what it is that uh, Coach Michael Pollock and uh, is, is trying to instill in them with regards to uh, offensive philosophy. Uh, I think you know, that there's going to be uh, some time that you still need to jail. You know, the, when the bullets are firing, you know, you still want to see that they're still making line calls correctly and things of that nature, which to this point in camp, they, they look great. Uh, they have some <laughs> real guys who I think you're going to hear from uh, as the season wears on. Uh, we didn't see uh, – um, uh, uh, I'm – losing his name right now, Cedric Dunbar. We didn't see Cedric Dunbar as a center. He was Jackson State's first all-conference offensive lineman since 2014. He didn't play in the spring. He'll now be making the line calls at center for Jackson State. Dylan mm. Spencer, who is the uh, transfer from uh, from Missouri, uh, who is a uh, – uh, he's a load at offensive guard. I think that's a name that you will hear – uh, going forward throughout the season in terms of, of Jackson State reestablishing what I think is an identity of Jackson State football, and that's strong offensive line and defensive line play. When they when they have the talent, they can push you off the ball. Nice. Let Drew, me, what are your thoughts in terms of FAMU, in terms of the, um, the offense, defensive line? You can kind of mix it up however you like. What, what have you seen, what have you heard in terms of how that team is gelling and playing together, those, those guys in the trenches? I, I, I do not recall the names because I really, I wasn't, I didn't do as much homework as I should have, uh, Professor, to be able to answer that question with, with the line as far as the names. But I do know Fab U sports a veteran offensive and defensive mm -hmm. line. But you mentioned the offensive line, which was a problem, in this past Saturday's game. There was one additional problem that you did not mention, though, uh, Mr. Professor, and mm -hmm. that is the special teams. Yeah. <laughs> and Fab, you arguably has the best punter in FCS in Chris Fadul. And he alone can make a difference in the game by we all know how good he is he can boom the ball when he needs to. He can put the ball inside the 10 when he needs to. Very few touchbacks. I think he may have only had about three or four touchbacks the entire 2019 season. So uh, you talk about him being able to punt the ball, field position that's game, that's and then on the flip side, you've got uh, Xavier Smith, who will probably – he may not be the full-time returner, but if it comes fourth quarter and fam, you needs a big return, I guarantee you're going to see number 19 back there to to return the ball. So, okay, uh, let me, question, let me... questions at, at kicker. But uh, assuming fam, you can block for their kicker, I think maybe special teams may be a bigger factor in this game than the trenches. Special well, teams. Saying, I keep special saying. Teams. Let me I keep y'all. saying. Coach let Simmons, me let Charles. Coaches. Hold on, Mike. I'm gonna let you get the last word in here. Let me let Charles do a little report in okay. regards to the special teams play uh, of Jackson State. Where do you see that? I really don't want to go the back and forth because you just stick off your chest and say this is that and whatever. I want you to focus on your team and talk about what you your know and what you see in regards to those segments of the game. What are some things? in that nature, because if we just get back and forth, all it is becomes a chatter and a chess match in regards sure. to saying, well, you didn't say this, so you didn't do that. Yeah. Sure. Th is nauseam in a lot of ways. Let's focus right. on what your expectation is and what you've seen with your eyes in terms of your special teams. He talked a little bit about the special teams. Fam, you made some great points. What about Jackson State in terms of their special team? Let me be crystal clear. You do not want to kick the ball to DeJon Nugget Warren. I'll be very crystal clear about that. Uh, we saw what he could do in the spring. Uh, there was a call, uh, the, the, the kickoff return against Alabama State immediately comes to mind. Uh, but what he can do in the special teams game is he can flip the field, just like Chris Padua can do for a Florida a and Nugget Warren is one of those guys who sees the field completely different. He is one of those guys who can find a small crease and he could be gone. And that could be uh, one factor in the game. 
Great points made by both. You can see why this is going to be one to turn on your television if you're not fortunate enough to be in the house. You can see both sides that these two teams are talented. It's going to be a chess match no matter what you want. There's going to be an edge uh, one point in one direction. You got passionate fans. You have fans that have covered these teams over the years. You had more insight from BCSN, in-depth information that you literally can't get anywhere else. I'm going to go to a little neutral uh, observer to some degree um, that uh, has some thoughts in terms of the matchup. And I'm going to let Mike have the final say in regards to just some things and some nuggets that he wanted to point out in terms of this matchup. Yeah, I think they came out eventually. I'm, I'm Switzerland in this one, so I am neutral. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I was going to mention uh, the Juwan uh, Warren, but I think CB mentioned that. I, I think FAMU has some transfers, Savion Williams and Jay Williams. They're from Tennessee. So uh, defensive lineman Savion Williams, a switch from Tennessee, uh, adds some, if you want to call it, SEC experience to the line. So we talked about the offensive line. What about that defensive front? Can they bring pressure to, to both young quarterbacks, um, so we'll, and we'll see. The other thing is, again, I reiterate the point that Coach Simmons has a history of being able to coach all three phases. He has a history of that. However, I think if you look at talent-wise, speed-wise, Jackson State would appear to seemingly have the edge. The other point, the Switzerland point I want to ask is, who's going to win, Sonic Bull in the South or the Marching 100? I don't even want to answer that. That that that's a that that that's how strongly I feel about that. <laughs> that's oh, well, I now, now, get now I will I will bring it to you, Mike. The most exciting entrance into any college football stadium belongs to the Sonic Boom of the South. They can back it up on the field as well. I do agree with that. Entrance is something to behold. With that being said, hey, wait, hold, all I was going to say is, Doc. Whichever side of this argument that you may be on, come to the Black College Sports Network because you're going to get both sides of it with the pregame show with Bishop and uh, Neely and the ONG Strike Zone with, with Brian, Kofi, and Kelvin. You're going to get both sides right here on the Black College Sports Network. So listen to both sides of it and then come Sunday afternoon, pick your alliance. Great point. I appreciate you getting that plug in. Very insightful. Thank you for listening to Inside the HBC Sports Lab. Make sure you share our podcast with your friends and colleagues. I am Dr. Kenyatta Cavill, the Dean of HBC Sports. Coming from inside the lab in the College of HBC Sports, Mike Watson and Charles Bishop. We hope you enjoyed our updates in terms of several of the games of the week. We certainly gave you some overtime uh, with some information. It's Charles Bishop of the pregame show, AD Drew of the Sports Wrap with Brian and AD, and then make sure you get that plug for the ONG Strike Zone as they're going to give you some insight on Florida strike and zone. Rattles all year long, <laughs> Jackson State. Then you got 1876 Podcast, Fairview A&M, and we'll have the special teams of them coming on on Thursday, giving you some more breakdowns and some more insight, different perspective on these matchups we talked today. So we're hot and heavy. We're going to take you inside the HBCU Sports Lab in black college sports like none other from so many different perspectives. Great information. Hope you enjoyed it. Follow me, Dr. Kenyatta Cavill, on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. That's D-R-K-E-N-Y-A-T-T-A-C-A-V-I-L. That's D-R-K-E-N-Y-A-T-T-A-C-A-V-I-L. Inside the HBCU Sports Lab 1 on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. That's HBCU Sports Lab on YouTube. Dream big. Continue to move forward. We will talk with you soon. A.D.? Prayers out to Carlos. Hope you're all right for the Carlos Brown show, show course. Charles. Lecture. Mike. Dismissed. <laughs> nice, nice.